Well, welcome to Cashing in the Northwest. This is the official podcast of Geo Woodstock 18 right here in the great Pacific Northwest. Each week, we're going to talk about caches and cashers from here and all around the globe. So while you're plotting ways to avoid the in-laws, we'll be caching in the Northwest. Well, of course, that means it's time to bring in our media savvy marmoset. Some say he tweets more than he eats. And others say he has a side business building igloos in Nunavut. All we know is he's called Len Monkey. It's highly possible that I tweet more than I eat, and Mrs. The Monkey's going to have none of it. So I think we'll just uh, keep rolling on. Tonight, we are very happy to have Sandra from Adventure Smart joining us again. Hello, Sandra. Hi. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, we are going to be talking about how to get out there and adventure and geocache smart in the winter time. So we're really looking forward to that. All right. Now, also, as we always do at this point in the show, a quick reminder that we appreciate the support of our patrons who help to keep this podcast coming each and every week. And of course, thanks to Land Sharks, our corporate Denali level sponsor. And folks, remember the new promotion from our friends at Land Sharks. For orders over $25, not including tax or shipping, we'll toss in a free cash maintenance kit. When completing your order on landsharks.ca, Put the phrase maintain me into the notes field and they will take care of the rest. If you want to know more about supporting the show, click the Patreon link on the cachingnw.com, a website. And you know what it's time for. It's time for glows. This is a section of the show that people really like. We like, we call it the geocaching log of the week, but that's a lot of words and we don't like words anymore. We like acronyms. So let's just say glow. Whether you read it or whether you wrote it, we want to hear about it because great logs sim make simply make geocaching better. I've said that so many times you'd think I'd get it right. You need an acronym so you don't have to say so many words. <laughs> Too many words. I've used up my words for the day. I apologize. I think the acronym for that sentence might actually just sound like a German word. Mm -hmm. Most acronyms do. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You know what you can do? You can send an email or a field recording to feedback at cachingnw.com. Call into 253-693-TFTC or use the voicemail tool on the website. We've given you all these different avenues to contact us, and we want to know how you glow. Bonus points for acronyms. In fact, let's see who can send in a glow with the most acronyms in one log. Ooh. How about that? TFTC. <laughs> I got a log in my email just this week from somebody who signed that. This week's GLOW, however, is not an acronym. It is from a cache called Elk Run Farm. And it's Muddy Teapot found Elk Run Farm. That's GC7 Alpha 9 Delta 8 found with Phil Knee. Knee. <laughs> the log reads, we had quite the adventure today, although it actually started a few weeks back. When we parked and we're about to leave the car to find us, read the description and realized we didn't have the battery. Today, we were prepared. We arrived at the place we'd parked last time, but it's the middle of a construction zone that we were not going to cross. We moved to the south and a short walk to ground zero. We spotted the cache from a short distance off. Uh, found there to use the battery and nothing. Turned the battery around and nothing. Phil reminded me we could easily test whether or not the battery has any charge. Nothing. Time for coffee and where we're close to a store. Buy a new battery. Back to ground zero and past the first stage easily. Maybe there are too many options for the second stage. Eventually, we worked out a system and we were able to sign the logbook. Thank you. How very nice. <clears throat> hey, you know, you always have to have the right tool of the trade for the cash. And this one was a battery. And you know what? Having a battery that you've kept in your pack for quite some time isn't always reliable. No, no. You got to change those out, refresh those. Yeah. And if they're rechargeables, that's mm. better for the environment. That way you can just charge that sucker up, toss it back in there and hope you'll never need it. Yeah. And don't carry that nine volt in your pocket with your keys. <laughs> Unless you need to stay warm. Yeah. 
<laughs> um, I saw the name of that cache. And I thought, geez, that sounds familiar. So I looked up the GC code. It is a bounce, 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 bounce cache, but it's been archived and I mm. have not found it, but the name just sounded really familiar. Apparently you won't now. And I won't. Mm. Well, I won't actually find it. And I'm sure someone's going to probably try and log it because, you know, that's what happens. Yeah, well, a zombie cache. <laughs> yeah. Hey, folks, if you want to add to tonight's content, just simply use the hashtag three T's in the chat. We'll get your question off to Sandra or maybe we'll answer it, but it may not be right. We'll let Sandra do it because she's going to answer it properly. If you want to have something in the after show, use the hashtag FATAS and we'll bring that up later. Perfect. Yeah. And so if you want to uh, use hashtag the number three, the letter T S for three T's, heck, you could do hashtag and just put three T's in there. That's okay. Mm. As long as you remember the three T's, that's really the whole point here. Like, right. uh, and, uh, oh, sorry. What's that, Chris? I was going to say like, are they all warm teas or can we do iced tea? <laughs> We'll talk about those three T's. We're going to clarify those three T's. Up oh, in okay. uh, oh. Yeah, yeah. Perfect, Sandra. Thank you for saving me. All the right. T's are all gray hot. <laughs> oh, stop being a tease. All right. Uh, we have some news tonight. Now, I don't know if you guys have seen this in your inbox yet or not, but uh, it's that time of year. There is a brand new kind of souvenir challenge. Now, I got to interject. On our last podcast, we played the interview that Chris had done with the creative studio up at HQ. And early on in that interview, I caught something. I made a little inline note in the show notes to Chris and he was like, oh, I'm not saying anything. But I they didn't alluded. Anything. Sorry, what's that? I didn't know anything. Oh, okay. I I, I didn't know if you were playing dumb or... Anyway, no, so... I just, a... yeah. <laughs> Wait, that didn't come out right. <laughs> But but they alluded to having just finished some art for a for a souvenir, and I'm thinking, huh, oh, okay, is there a new new challenge coming out? And lo and behold, there is. Starting December 11th, get ready for a three week challenge of geocaching, two times per week to earn one special souvenir. It's the final countdown to 2020, so finish the year strong. Doodle -doo, doo, doodle -doo, doo doo. The sooner you start, the more likely you'll be to succeed and you will never get that song out of your head for the rest of the night. Are you ready? They say it's as easy as one, two, three. You have three weeks from December 11th, 2019 until January 1st, 2020. Uh, you need to just find two geocache outings per week. Oh, so there you go. You don't, you just need every week, two geocache outings. Find a geocache on two different days each week. Um, in fact, you can find a geocache for any six days during the three weeks. So I suppose you could do the first six days in a row if you really want to get that souvenir quickly. Um, however you want to do it, the choice is yours. It's one souvenir. <laughs> and uh, you'll earn that souvenir by caching two days per week, December 11th, to January 1st. Or, you know, six days. I guess yeah, the caveat yeah. is you can go at geocaching, but you actually have to find a geocache or attend an event to oh, earn the souvenir. Just because you go out of your house doesn't mean you're going to get the souvenir. Oh, yeah. I go out of my house a lot. My wife insists upon it. <laughs> well, there you go. Okay. You could, and you could cash for 18 days and you'd still only get one souvenir. <laughs> but you'd get a warm feeling inside. Unless it's cold outside. Well, cold outside, but warm feeling inside. Okay. There you go. So enjoy that souvenir. But tonight, we're going to talk about the three T's. And we'd like to welcome Sandra back to the podcast. We're so glad to have you here. Why don't you, could you give everybody maybe a quick reminder um, what your goals are as the Adventure Smart organization and tell us a little bit about what you're bringing to the table tonight, the three T's. Well, in and amongst three T's and quite a bit more, thanks first for having me back. It's great to be here with everyone and, and share our message with all the listeners, uh, no matter where they're based. So just a little refresher and or intro to what we do. Uh, Adventure Smart is all about outdoor safety and personal preparedness. And the whole focus behind the campaign is to increase awareness so that we can reduce the number and severity of search and rescue calls in the province of BC and throughout the country. And realistically anywhere uh, if people are prepared with what they're doing wherever they're geocaching or hiking or snowmobiling or any activity 
Uh, the whole idea and the destination is home. And, and what we do is we provide resources to every outdoor enthusiast uh, so that they can be safe and, and plan before they go, take care of themselves while they're out there. And if something goes sideways, which it does a few times in BC, we'll talk about that in a bit, you have all the processes in place and the training and the methods to alert search and rescue so that they can bring you home faster and in better condition. Uh, we deliver outdoor safety programs. We have great social media platforms, contests, giveaways. We tend to events and we train volunteers to join our campaign so that more people can increase the uh, message with increasing awareness and working with affiliates if it's provincial, municipal, local, girl guides, geocachers, uh, so that we can spread the love. Uh, really all about being safe outdoors is our main focus. Nice. Well, thank you for that. Now, Sandra, you've been on the show before and you know, that means you, you, you might get some fans of, because you know, people remember you. So GSM times two says Sandra is a great guest with great information. He really enjoyed your last appearance. Well, thank you very much. It's, it's, it's easy to sit here and chat with you guys. I'm comfortable. Everybody's <laughs> in, their, in their comfy spot right now at this time of night. And it, it's a great chance to sit in a relaxed atmosphere and share what we have for everyone out there. And, and the resources are available online and face to face. And, and, you know, if we can, we can help everyone just improve a little bit more on how they head out there to enjoy the outdoors, uh, then, then we're winning and we have success. Hashtag winning. I love it. All right. Bringing winning back. Perfect. Okay. Hey, given that SAR prevention is a primary goal for Adventure Smart, how, how do you guys measure your success in that area? And, and is there anything you're able to share with us on, on progress this year? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I feel like I'm sitting around the board table and I get asked to report back and saying, how are we doing? And what's the success rates? And can you give us tangibles? <laughs> So yes, I do have answers for you. Uh, that's my job. And, and it, it's the short answer. It's not always easy to measure. There are certain ways that we do measure that. And, and um, it comes in many forms. So a little preface, we're 15 years old, 15 years young. So we've been at it a little bit. And the whole focus is to reduce the number and severity of search and rescue calls. So you would hope and think that success would mean that that annual stat is reducing. Um, so right now, currently in British Columbia, as one example, there's 1,700 search and rescue calls in the province of BC every year. That's a lot. It's too many. Unfortunately, in the 15 years of Adventure Smart, that number's increased. So someone, some people would say that I'm failing at my job. I don't think so. Uh, but there's a lot involved in that equation in outdoor recreation activities and tourism and outdoor recreation interests. A lot more people have access or are making a priority to have outdoor activities as part of their lifestyle. So there's a lot involved in that equation. So we see success um, on many platforms. I spend a lot of time outside and so do our affiliates and we're seeing our Adventure Smart uh, whistles on ski jackets and on hiking backpacks. We're, we're noticing a lot more people are using our tools and, and recognizing us at events and inviting us to their communities. If it's a school group, a corporation, a hiking club, a snowmobile group, a church group, we're getting those requests come into our, our BC campaign faithfully almost daily. So that's success to me. So it's not so much of a selling point for me to, to fish for um, opportunities to share a message. They're coming my way now and our way. Also, social media plays a big role. We could do a whole show on that. Uh, the success of the conversations that we have throughout our social media platforms is also showing there's a huge interest and it's, and it's turning a really nice corner that people are sharing more of a safety message. If it's ours, that's great. But in general, that still works. And that's turning into something that's cool and, and sexy per se, where, where we all know that search and rescue response is pretty cool. Not so much education, really. But that seems to be taking a slight corner. So that's success, too. Uh, we see a lot more people um, uh, using our resources. And one of them is our new trip plan app, which we can talk about in detail shortly. And that's a free tool for anyone in Canada. And you can download it, file your trip plan with friends and family. And, and currently in British Columbia, um, we have 75% of the national downloads in the country are in British Columbia. 
we're an active healthy province and, and the use of our app, which is less than a year old, is a, a small component of that proof and that success. So there's many components and annually on a face-to-face -face basis, my staff who are just a few really, uh, they speak to over 25,000 people a year face-to-face. -face. That's through a program delivered, presentation, a trailhead or a ski hill visit or a workshop or a conference. So that's a lot of people to talk to for a very small crew that we have here. So many, many facets of success there. Wow, nice. that is an excellent answer. And uh, my goodness, I didn't want you to feel like you were sitting uh, at the table with the board of directors. But <laughs> <laughs> that is really, really informative. And I appreciate you sharing that with us and our listeners. Thank you. Nice. Uh, we have feedback from Cliff, who's in the chat with us this evening. He says, I would assume the population going up and the number of people who go outdoors now has a lot mm. to do with the increase. I We don't think you're doing a bad job. We think you're doing a great job. We think people are going out more. Yeah, <laughs> yeah 20 years ago, geocaches weren't going out at all. That's right. <laughs> well, they were. They probably were. They probably just weren't known. <laughs> yeah, and they weren't geocaching. They weren't geocaching, yeah. Well, that's, there's no question that's part of the equation. Uh, there's a lot more people that are wanting to uh, spend time outdoors. It's, it's great for our physical health, our mental health, and, and creates stability in our bodies and minds. And, and, and people are exploring further and farther. And, and there's different groups like backcountry trail running groups and snowshoeing's taken off and, and uh, snowmobiles can take people farther and faster. So that access comes in many, many forms. And, and, and so that definitely, like the commenter said there, makes a part of the equation as well. There's no question. And tourism plays a role, access, easy access, interest, abilities, and, and they all play a factor in there. So even though those numbers aren't going down, at times the severity of the search and rescue calls are less, and that's also a sign of success. We've got another sign of success here in the chat. I wanted to share with you, Sandra, um, from a local BC cacher. And I'm oh, sorry, now we're just covering faces, but um, this is hashtag three T's. Three cachers stayed safe last weekend. We really wanted to finish a piece of geo art, but left with only two caches still to go because we knew our limits and we knew we wouldn't be safe if we kept going. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'll say thank you on behalf of the 2,500 volunteers who, who are our search and rescue responders and volunteers, unpaid professionals, really. I'm not sure where the caller's um, uh, commenting from, but in British Columbia, there are 80 search and rescue groups that respond to 1,700 calls a year. And there's 2,500 of those members who are volunteers. And, and when you make those decisions, uh, and what we do is try to influence decision making and different behaviors. And, and that is an excellent example of, they made a decision on the spot, even though they wanted to continue and reach the summit, if that's what you'd like to say, uh, that's, a, that's a different for all of us, the summit's different, but when you change your mind and decide to turn around, that can still be a, a great choice. And, and I believe that's adventure smart and, and, and that's acting upon that because you, you made a great decision, a smart decision. Very cool. Exactly. One more thing, I just want to throw Alan's comment in here too before we move on. Um, so you were commenting earlier, Sandra, about uh, the words getting out more downloads and uh, Alan says he loves the trip plan app. Heard about it on the last podcast. So that's great. We're glad that's that we were able to help in some small way. Exactly, Alan. Thank you for your comments. As, you know, we, we create these things with all of us across the country and we don't always hear feedback. So that's great to hear that you've used it, heard about it, used it, and, and it's working for you. Nice. Now, Sandra, we have a number of our listeners uh, that are based in the U.S. and other countries. This is an international podcast. Does the messaging and information you have, does that relate to them as well? Or is it just for Canadians? It's for everyone. Any Anyone who has access to, to the website has access to our information. Uh, YouTube, our social media, we can't hide in the little corner of BC and in, in the big country of Canada and keep it all to ourselves. Uh, it, it's, it's established here. It started, Adventure Smart started in British Columbia in 2004. Uh, based on our success, it went national in 2009. And, and so there's representation from coast to coast to coast in Canada. 
We've also been um, uh, approached by different organizations throughout the world to emulate our model and take Adventure Smart back to their countries. New Zealand has Adventure Smart now, thanks to us, thanks to the program. Uh, so they've gone and done that. And, and that's really exciting to see. I think in the last year also, um, Adventure Smart UK has uh, established itself and, and, and they did some R&D and found out what, what we were doing and really pretty much kind of mimicked what we've we've done. So it's a feather in our cap to see that it's gone beyond the Canadian borders. And, and for those out there who are who are exploring anywhere in the world and find our resources, they're there for you to use as well. Um, you know, we, we really want to remind everyone to trip, plan, train and take those essentials, no matter where you're exploring in the world. And whatever your first responders and your, your um, community is where you live, you have police you who are the first tasking manager, and you also probably have search and rescue if they're paid or unpaid. The whole focus anywhere is to reduce the number and severity of the calls there as well. So what we also encourage people to do is, is a lot of us travel and, and coming to Canada, knowing these resources are available. If you can come and be a responsible traveler, then that's a really great decision. That's also Adventure Smart. I work closely with a lot of tourism affiliates. Um, I'm here in Kelowna this, this week at uh, the International Indigenous Tourism Conference, but also work closely with different sectors of tourism. And a huge focus of what they're including in their messaging now is the Adventure Smart boilerplate documents and, and, and resources. And, and they're really focusing on their responsibility of the uh, come visit us. Uh, they're inviting people to their regions of the country. They also understand they have a responsibility to promote safety. And so they include the Adventure Smart message and encourage people to be responsible travelers if it's around bears, um, preparation, outdoor safety, climbing, boating, it doesn't matter what it is. They include now the Adventure Smart message, knowing people are coming to our country to enjoy the outdoors and, and they understand that they need to have a responsibility taken upon themselves as well. Very cool. I want to talk about the Adventure Smart app a little bit more, the trip planning app. Now, You've shared and we've heard that British Columbia has the the lion's share, get it, BC lions, <laughs> uh, sorry, um, of trip plan app downloads. But I'm curious, does that actually translate into a lion's share of trip plans filed also, or do you have some way of knowing those stats? We do. So, so most of those filed in Canada are in British Columbia. Uh, there's no question. And, and, and the number isn't massive yet. Let's not say it's millions. Uh, we only just launched it in February this year. So there's still lots of promotion and advertisement for it and, and increasing awareness about that. But we're finding when we go to events now, people are recognizing us and saying, oh, great, Adventure Smart's here. That's great to see you again. And so it, it's becoming a little bit more um, common. The app is relatively new, though. So we're 15 years old, young. The app is less than less than one year old, so it's our job to, um, as ambassadors, to share that information out there, let the people know that there's even that resources resource to use. Uh, at this conference I'm at here in Kelowna, there's 700 plus delegates, and I was able to share that information with uh, a few hundred, hopefully, and and so it's a slow go. But between our, our, our uh, public safety announcements, our work with uh, BC Search and Rescue Association members and sharing it online and, and doing uh, promotions like this, it's, a, it's an easy platform to get the message out there and, and we continue to increase that awareness. And the more downloads, the better. It's, it's not here for us, it's here for you. And, and, and that will help you um, come home safe and sound if you ever needed to have authorities use it. I love that. Thank you. On behalf of all of us, thank you. You're welcome. Um, now, the other, my my co-host, the other gentleman in this podcast will not let me forget that sometimes I misspeak and I don't know what season it, it is coming into. Uh, you know, I've, I mistakenly said it was coming to winter when it was autumn and they won't, they won't let me forget that. But winter is nearly upon us because, you know, I wake up in the morning and it's cold. And, you know, we've had some of these big seasonal changes here in the Pacific Northwest. Does that change your messaging from Adventure Smart? Ever so slightly. 
So our main message stays the same, spring, summer, winter, or fall, and, and that's uh, really to follow those three Ts, like the hashtag you referenced. We really need you to trip plan, hopefully using the app. Uh, a sticky note on the fridge works, the app works better. Uh, we want you to have the proper training to, to head out for your adventure and, and take those essentials with you. And the kicker there with the season changing and the activity really is we want you to add to those essentials with you um, based on the season and the sport. So for winter, it changes ever so slightly. So if we're heading out for a snowmobile in the back country, we have all those essentials with us. Uh, there Maybe there's some personal essentials if it's medication, uh, uh, preference and snacks, uh, you know, and, and there's essentials there in case it's first aid based on our conditions. But then for winter, for those of us who travel out there in the snow, it would be an avalanche transceiver, an avalanche probe and an avalanche shovel. And the kicker there is going back to that second T is the training and knowing how to use those pieces of equipment that you're adding to your essentials. You have to know how to use all of those pieces of equipment that are in there. Uh, you can pack it all, but if you don't know how to use it, it's, it's almost useless to you to a degree. Uh, so you have to know how to use everything that you put in there, even if it's a fire making kit, your first aid kit based on your training and level of training. Mine might be different to Jay's um, and, and vice versa. So we need to, we probably would have a different kit packed. But if we're heading out there for a snowshoe, we both have that avalanche transceiver shovel and probe. We also have our avalanche skills training course under our belt. We've taken it, we've practiced. And then I know that I can trust myself with Jay in case something goes sideways. Uh, my life is in his hands and his is in mine. So for a winter time activities um, on the snow, it's, it's all of those essentials, add to it season of sport specifics and personal essentials and have the training to go along with those uh, essential pieces of equipment. So we're tailoring our needs somewhat based on the season. Is there, though, you've kind of already hit on it, but is there one overwhelming risk factor that we should need to keep in mind for winter outdoorsmen? For everyone heading out, you know, those are a few common mistakes that are made winter, summer, spring, or fall, really. And, and a lot of them play around a few similarities. And, and we all know when it gets dark, <laughs> we see it every single day. And yet a lot of people head out too late in the day for their activity. And that can happen in the summer, even in the winter. You know, you know, those some of us are prepared for that. We have our headlamps with us. We have extra batteries. We're prepared. We're choosing to go out for a night hike, let's say. Um, but not everyone plans or even realizes what time the sun's actually setting in their region of the province or country. So paying close attention to that. And that component goes right back to the first T, which is trip planning doing a little bit of homework before you head out and seeing what time the sun sets in your area. And do you have everything you need to get through that uh, if, if it happens to be, if you're not out in time. So having that trip plan filed is a common mistake, not having, not paying attention to that light situation and, and really not planning to the level that they should for the fact in case they do need to spend the night. No one wants to be in that boat. There's no question. We all want to uh, get home to our bed and <laughs> cozy jammies and, and be warm and cozy. But if you needed to spend the night, could you? Do you have what you uh, need to get through the evening and, and, and get to the morning somewhat comfortably or at least safely? Uh, you may not be comfortable. Yeah. You might be chilly. But at least you could safely be there in the morning and, and search and rescue members can come and find you. So there's a lot to think about before you head out there. Think of the what ifs. Yeah. Sunset's a big deal. I know around here, I, I see the sunset on Sunday night and then I see the sunrise on Saturday morning. Cause during the week I leave a home in the dark and come home in the dark. So I'm not sure the sun ever comes up during the week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No kidding. Um, so aside from the trip plan, which we've talked about, and uh, we, we can't talk about enough, honestly, mm -hmm. um, the other two of the three T's are take the essentials and training. What Now I'm going to ask a question here, but before I ask the question, I also want to preface it with one of the things that I've learned is that uh, an essential you should always have is, is water, is hydration. And that amount does not change between seasons, the amount that you need, even if it feels colder. And I think that's that's actually one of the, I would add that as to a risk factor as well, that people think, oh, it's cold, I don't need as much water. Um, but other than that, what would be the core essentials to make sure you have with you on any winter adventure? 
Any winter adventure. So we'll go back to the basics. It, you know, flashlight, spare batteries, and bulb, fire making kit. Knowing how to start safely that fire, keep it going, and put it out if necessary. Um, the lint from your dryer is an excellent uh, uh, idea there for a starter. A signaling device, a whistle and or a mirror, extra food and water, that one liter extra per person, which for some that sounds like a lot, for some of us it doesn't sound like very much at all. Uh, that's, that's in addition to your hydration, so that's just for emergencies. Um, and, and making that extra clothing, rain, wind, water protection, and a toque, and make sure you have extra clothing there for you. Navigation and comms communication. And that can vary in different means. And that's not your cell phone. It's not your cell phone. It's not your cell phone. Uh, it can be, uh, it can and should be um, a satellite phone, two-way radio. Uh, you've got a spot in reach. There's many things. People always ask us, what should it be? Whatever it is, uh, you should know how to use it, what it's capable of, and, and the restrictions of that. And if there's a fee, uh, um, uh, signaling, all of that. Um, and having a first aid kit, knowing how to use it, emergency shelter, pocket knife, sun protection, winter, extra food, extra clothing, uh, that tra transceiver, shovel and probe, and, and making sure that you're you're outfitted for the activity that you've chosen to do. So if I head for a snowshoe, I'm prepared for that because I know I'm probably going to get warm and work up a bit of a sweat so I can regulate my body temperature with some pit sits in my, in my clothing, but also bundle up then when we get to the peak and I need to have uh, my lunch and my drink and then I can bundle up and keep warm. Snowmobiling, transceiver, shovel, and probe. I can't say that enough with the training to go along with it. And 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 those essentials are your, I'd say those are your basics for winter. Um, and making sure you're capable of keeping warm and dry. And, and knowing how to signal to search and rescue when and if, and, and if you need to do that within the snow. Do you know how to make a signal in the snow and, and create that in, in an opening and a clearing? But it, those are a few uh, commonalities for winter for sure. And, and the training is a big one. I can't say that enough about the training and knowing that you're prepared for the backcountry in the winter, because what we have a lot of is easy access in British Columbia, especially in the South Coast. Knowing that that is there is great, but it gives people a false sense of security and they often don't even have half of what I've just listed. That's right. Sometimes all they have is sparkly uh, sneakers and a, and a light jacket and you know, I'm only going to be gone for an hour. How bad can it be? Yeah, it can be pretty bad. That's right. Pretty, now, pretty cold. Sandra, you've talked several times about training. You, you've mentioned adventure training and now backcountry training. Um, what, what is this training and you know, where do you get it? You know, I'm sure it varies from season to season as well. It definitely can vary from season to season. So um, depending on what your activity is, we want to make sure you can obtain the knowledge and the skills that you need to have before you head out there. No matter what the activity, if it's geocaching, if it's snowmobiling, if it's climbing, if it's uh, backcountry touring, backcountry camping, paddling, we can go on with the list. But the idea is to obtain that the knowledge and skills before you head out. That can consist of physical training, being fit physically. Can I make that hike of two hours or 20 minutes? Am I physically capable of doing that? Maybe I could do it 20 years ago, but can I do it now? Because now the kids want to go and let's go try it. Or a group of friends that are in a different level of fitness. So think of your physical capabilities. Training sounds kind of harsh sometimes, like you have to go to the gym and, and, and train, but you know, maintaining a physical fitness is important. We're an active healthy province, we need to maintain that. And also mental stability and, and mental health um, and training. So are we mentally capable of reaching that summit? Physically, sometimes we are, mentally not always. So that can be built up over time, um, building your endurance mentally and physically just comes from doing activities over and over. If it's out in the rain and the wind and the snow, we, we build a resilience to that. And to me, that's building a form of training as well. Um, and, and making sure you know how to stay within your limits. So let's say the four of us chose to go for a snowshoe next week and we head out there and, and we've done everything right, and but we'd have different abilities if it's physical or mental, uh, mentally. And, and we've packed everything, but we're at different levels. So knowing how to stay within our limits, within most likely the lowest denominator of the user of the group, that would be as fast as we would go, and keeping in check with everyone. So, you know, training doesn't always come 
based on a certification. It can, it doesn't always have to. Um, a good example of yes, that would be, would be your avalanche skills training. That's a certification based training, but there's so many other components of, of being trained for an activity. It can be mentorship. Yeah, my dad taught me how to build a fire years ago. Who knew it would come in handy always. Uh, he knew it. I didn't at the time. It was just a chore after school that I had to fill the wood box and, and, and queue up that fire. But, it, it, you know, these, these are things we learn along the way, some of us, but not everyone. So maybe a, an official training of fire building would be helpful for some. So the training comes in many forms, but just knowing and staying within your limits is, is a key component. I think I have the opposite uh, mental, physical thing. I think I can go do that. And then I find my body just won't do what I think it can anymore. <sighs> Someday I'll get old and it'll get even worse. So <laughs> we're talking about snowshoeing. We're talking about snowmobiling. I want to do both those activities and never have. I've never taken any avalanche training. I can build a fire. At least I think I can. But if I want to brush up and refresh my old training and learn some new training, do you have like do you have any places in mind places things you can recommend to get that equipment and that get that training before we go out and try those fun activities? There's a lot out there, and I think wherever we're based in the country, we can go to our outdoor stores and 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 ask there. We can uh, check in with Mountain Equipment Co-op. We we don't say one is better than the other, but there's Valhalla. There's there's um, Cabela's. There's so many places where you can have access to free workshops. Uh, basic 101 orienteering. Uh, MEC again offers a great 101 series and many outdoor um, uh, activities and training. And, and then you can take it up a notch. And Avalanche Canada is an awesome partner of ours and supporter of our winter message and theirs. We share a lot of messaging throughout the winter. And they've created incredible curriculum for the providers of the Avalanche Skills training courses. So those are all um, available through our website, if you went to um, adventuresmart.ca and headed to the winter section and, and go down to the bottom of any one of our pages, you'll see different links that will take you to the Life Saving Society for Drowning Prevention and, and Mount Equipment Co-op is another one and Parks Canada for more parks information. So there's lots of information there that can guide you to uh, the right training um, as compared to saying uh, you should go to ABC or XYZ. There's a, there's a wealth out there in your community that would be able to provide that to you. You know, and don't dismiss your, your recreation centers in your communities where they have basic courses. And, and, and ours isn't certification-based. It's an, an awareness program. And, and you can come to us for that very basic training as well. So what we have is five different programs underneath our umbrella. And they're all available to anyone in Canada free of charge. And, and we're here to offer online training or face-to-face. -face. So we'll come to your church group, your school, um, your, your, your community group, and we'll deliver any of those uh, curriculum programs to you free of charge. And they're about an hour long, and we'll talk to you about three Ts, and we'll talk to you about season sport-specific activities and how your children as young as kindergarten to grade six can take the Hug a Tree and Survive program. Or if you're a group of avid backcountry trail runners and you want to uh, take our survive outside program we can focus on alerting search and rescue uh, backcountry preparedness with clothing because they love to travel light uh, and, and how to pack that really efficiently but how to leave that trip plan in detail so we can delve into so many user groups with all of our programs uh, so start with us and we can we can share the the love with other programs as well i think i think that's really great advice because i'll, I'll say for example this past week after work, we went to Costco to pick up some groceries. And as I'm walking down the aisle, they had racks of snowshoe kits at a great price. So families, and I can see you know, families look at them and go, oh, let's buy snowshoes. Let's go out and try snowshoeing. And I'm thinking, oh, okay, but like know what you're doing before you go out there. <laughs> I so, know. It's tricky, you know, and, and, and I love everyone that's, passionate and wants to get outdoors it's awesome it's 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 a great way to spend time with family and and so we work closely with uh those outdoor stores there's many of them that are selling these pieces of equipment that make it easy for the unaware 
outdoor user to gain access to these trails, spring, summer, winter, or fall. And what we do is we put on awareness workshops for uh, staff of, of, of these stores, Mech, Cabela, Canadian Tire, doesn't matter who you are. And uh, we'll come to you and, and we'll increase the awareness of the staff at these outdoor stores so that they can also provide adventure smart information to the patron who's buying the snowshoes who knows nothing about where they're about to go and 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 so they can incorporate and and add value to um uh, what's happening there in the store and they can link people to the resources that maybe they didn't even know were available to them that's brilliant i didn't realize you guys did that that's that's fantastic glad to hear that um speaking of adventure smart team showing up at events um this past weekend we were fortunate enough as geocacher group to have the adventure smart team at our GIF event this past weekend. Now, uh, and in addition to that, um, I actually was able to work with you, Sandra, to get uh, one of your folks to come in this past summer to do a presentation in my workplace, which was really well received and people still talk about it at work, which is great. <laughs> it resonated. Yay. Great. That's good. Um, now, if someone wanted to have adventure smart present at their event, uh, is that something now you've just alluded to it is it something they can arrange and how how would they get that set up that's right we're so we're here for you we're not just uh chatting on social media and, and doing the odd podcast here and there at nine o'clock at night we're we're also uh you know coming into your community and, and delivering these programs uh face to face and and that's where the message is really received i think and, and it gives a chance to have that conversation and engage and, and inform and, and have that session with people person uh, face to face. So you can find all of our information at adventuresmart.ca. You can email me directly and I'll, and I'll set you up and, and that can be anywhere in the province of BC that I can help you with. Uh, and, and also you can uh, direct message us on Instagram or Twitter. We're, we're very versed in communicating in many shapes and forms and, and easy access directly to me as BC coordinator at adventuresmart.ca. And, and that's easy, but all the programs are listed on the website at adventuresmart.ca and each one has access to request a presentation. So let's say you headed there and you wanted to request the um, snow safety education program for your kids in grade seven who are heading up to go for a ski trip next month. Send in that request. Uh, it comes to me if it's, it's if it's a provincial request and then I can uh, figure out a presentation for your group and, and coordinate it as easy as that. It's really simple. And again, it's all free of charge. There's no cost to you. Uh, ideally, when we come into schools and workplaces, we want to talk to as many people as possible. So the more the merrier. We do assembly style presentations for school groups and, and, and we'll speak to as many as we can. And that's the whole idea is to share this message with as many people as possible. Anyone who takes our presentations or runs into us anywhere with our work receives uh, a safety tool. So everyone's receiving an emergency signaling device. It's also a whistle with instructions on how to use it safely. Uh, to alert search and rescue, you get a signaling card to alert aircraft and an emergency shelter, a trip planner. So we, we give you tools that we're talking about so that you can take them home and start your kit and then add more to it. Uh, so email us, Facebook, DM us on social media and, and uh, website and we'll help you out. Nice. Well, that is wonderful. Uh, now I'm, I'm kind of sad. I don't live in Canada. <laughs> <sighs> the troubles that the Americans have to go through. <laughs> uh, Sandra, Sandra, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we do have a couple of questions. Um, and, and I hope this answer, the, the answer to this question is very low because uh, Keats94 asks, how many people who have used the app end up requiring SAR assistance? Great question. So we have um, just started to track that information provincially and nationally. And, and it, it's all there in going into a data management system uh, within British Columbia. So far, we've had success stories with search and rescue calls where people have used a form of a trip plan, not necessarily per se the trip plan app as of yet. So uh, a lot of people are using it and, and filing it with friends or family and then completing it when you get back. That's critical because sometimes we tell people where we're going, but then we don't say that we're back. 
So complete your trip plan, that's important. And that's something that helps us um, see on our stats as well, that people are heading it out there, completing it when they got back. We know they're back safe and sound. Um, but uh, success stories with a trip plan in general that have been filed have been really greatly shared in BC. We have some search and rescue groups that have shared that. Um, there's one incident that happened up uh, close to the lower mainland in an area called Indian Arm. It's a, it's a fjord of the water and, and a gentleman went up there on a solo adventure, left a very detailed trip plan at home. It wasn't the app, unfortunately. It was before we launched it, but it was a detailed information trip plan left with his, with his wife. Um, and he got into trouble and hurt himself quite bad. And it was only because of that trip plan that he left with his family that that was be able to forwarded to the police who were in charge of the situation. Then it was given off to the local search and rescue group. They could read it, see where he was, what was happening. Boom, they were there and he was out faster than if he hadn't did, done that at all. So as we move forward, we'll be able to track those success stories with our app further in the future. Um, but right now we have some other great success stories like that one that are, that are great to hear because any form of trip plan will work. A sticky note on the fridge, a trailhead selfie, a text to your partner, those all work and let them know that you're back safe and sound. We've just made it easy for you and given you a platform to use the app so that you don't have to create anything and, and we keep it simple. And we don't keep any of your information just to let you know. Uh, you're just you're just sending that off to a friend or family, text or email, and they have it to share beyond in case something goes sideways. That's really nice to know that you're not keeping the information. I mean, in this day of information security, that uh, that's really good to know. You're in control of the information you send. It's all up to you that we're we're leaving that responsibility up to you and trying to empower you. Um, and there used to be check in, check out boxes at different park trailheads. Some of us may remember those days where the park ranger or the warden would have to then read that little piece of paper inside the wooden box that was locked with the padlock. And they would, you know, check the cars in the lot and and maybe some areas that still happens. But we're we're in a roundabout way that's transferring that responsibility to the land manager or the land operator. That responsibly, responsibility needs to be with you for your actions, and then that's with your circle of emergency contacts to locate and uh, first responders in case they need help. So that responsibility is yours. There is uh, another comment in the chat from GeoNavPros. It's something, Sandra, you and I were talking about this before the podcast started, and he's commenting about uh, the number of people we passed uh, who were heading up to St. Mark's while we were hiking back down. And it was it was dusk, -ish, and you know how it is around here in the big trees. Um, it gets dark before it gets dark. And uh, he's saying, how, how many people did we pass who were, uh, who were just starting up and that we opened their eyes to what they were doing? <laughs> and there were a large number. And Sandra and I were talking about this before the podcast. But Sandra, do you want to talk about, about what we were talking about earlier, about the you know, just being willing to talk to other people. Yeah, and that's a great segue. We were just talking about that, Jay. It was, it was great that someone else has brought that up. And and what we had a chat about was that responsibility as a community member to say something. Should we comment to someone else that, you know, you're coming out, you know that it's dark probably within 15 minutes. That's why you're almost back in the car. Um, and others are heading in the other direction, which is up and out and back and to a summit. And, and I think it's our responsibility to share that message. And, and it can be tricky. Do you, do you feel it's your responsibility? Are you comfortable in saying anything? Uh, it's easy for an authority figure to say something. Uh, I used to be a park ranger, so it was easy to say something when I had a flasher on my shoulder and a Stetson on my head. That was It was part of my responsibility. Now, if I'm just up there in my civvies and nobody knows who I am, would they like to hear that message from me? And how would I deliver or share that message? Uh, it's a tricky, fine line to walk. But uh, Jay had commented that he's done that before too, and so have I. And it's only out of um, concern for the uh, fellow hiker. And, and you just, you know, maybe they didn't realize it was going to be, and it's considerably darker once you get in that bush than it is right out here, right before sunset. So maybe they're, maybe they're new to the area. Maybe they're just starting out in those activities and they don't realize once you get in that setting, how quickly the elements can change for you visually and physically. So I think it's a great idea if people can speak up, then it creates a, a community feeling. Uh, 
a, a sense of people are looking out for each other and, and it, we can instill that message and maybe guide them to the Adventure Smart website to learn more or say, hey, I, or, you know, hey, I heard about Sandra on the podcast and she's got some great information, you know, you guide them somewhere and, and, and feel that you can share some information that hopefully will be received really well too, because it's, we just want everyone to come home safe and sound. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah, the way, um, so GeoNav Pros and I were uh, striking up the conversation with people on the trail was, uh, Hey, how you doing? Where are you headed? <laughs> <laughs> it shouldn't be that way. It should be that way. <laughs> yeah, in your t-shirt and shorts and cell phone. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? That speaks back to so many things, but it can be easy access, gives a false sense of security. Um, it can also be uh, interest in outdoor recreation. Social media plays a role. There's just beautiful pictures of all of us wherever, paddling, summiting, geocaching and and these are look beautiful and successful but not everyone realizes what it takes to get there mm -hmm. so there's so many components in in why people are going um tourism and we can have a huge conversation it's massive but um i i appreciate when people speak up and try to help each other yeah keats also just mentioned he said i'd rather ask where they're headed and take it from there i think it's rather key to remind folks of the risks so yeah, social media just, you know, they look at it and go, oh, I just saw this great picture from, you know, this summit. I think I'm going to go. And they don't realize, you know, how how intense it could have been to get there or, you know, the, the items to take. And that's why, Sandra, we have you on the podcast is to help remind us that, you know what? Outdoors is a great place to be, but you have to be prepared for it. It's critical. And, and you know what everyone does, uh, in my personal opinion, is we share our, our highlights on social media. We share the best of, we share the shiny and the glossy and the, ah, we share everything that's amazing. And yet let's speak of a hike that maybe took four hours instead of two because there were snow conditions, their feet were wet. Uh, they were hitting sinkholes in the snow. Someone got a soaker, someone twisted an ankle and had to go, you know, we don't always share the other side of the summit. And I think we should, I think we should spend more time sharing the reality of what it might take. And maybe that's a smooth sail and everything's successful and, and everything went well. Share your trip plan ideas, share what you used, if it's the app or not. Talk about your training and, and show your essentials and be proud. And, 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 and I think this is a way where we can collectively increase that awareness. And hopefully it's adventure smart messaging. And if it's not, it's still going to be helpful. And I think once that um, becomes common and how we can all be sharing what happens to get to those peaks, it, then it's a full story. And then it's um, a beginning, preparation, mm -hmm. adventure, and conclusion. So I think it needs to be a little bit more detailed. There you go. And, and Dora Moore says, we don't share the times we fell in the lake. And uh, well, um, Dora Moore can't share all the times she fell. In. <laughs> I was going to say, don't worry, Dora Moore. I'll share the times you fell in the lake. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, even that, you know, we've joked around with Dora Moore about that before. But, um, you know, even when accidents have happened, she's been in situations where there, she was with a group that people were responsive, people had the right equipment, and that what could have been much more tragic ended up just being an ongoing joke on a podcast. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Exactly. And that's because they, 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 people were capable and aware, and things can go sideways for all of us. Uh, no matter how experienced you are, inexperienced you are, um, those who are experienced, um, they've built up some experience and resilience and if it's training or hands-on and, and it, you can get through those situations and and those of us who are experienced are here to uh, support those who are just getting into it and, and we're not saying you don't go and we just go it's there for everyone and we want everyone to enjoy the, the places that we love to explore so let's those of us who are experienced and have resources uh, like all of you here tonight with me we can share that with the unaware and the new adventurers and the new Canadians and reaching the wider um, facet of outdoor users so that we can all get out there and be safe and, mm -hmm. and, and enjoy at all, all levels. Great Certainly. Message. 
Well, Sandra, once again, thank you for being on. Um, we have what we call the after show after the show. I, I know we came up with that on our own. Uh, <laughs> it's an opportunity for those listening live to ask questions. They could be related to the show topic. They could be completely off the wall. We have no idea what's going to happen. You're welcome to stay. If you need to leave, we completely understand. But thank you again for joining us tonight. Would you once again give a web address and some social media addresses for our folks to be able to follow up with you? Absolutely. So the website is easy. It's adventuresmart.ca. And that's a national platform. But here in British Columbia, we have uh, three social platforms that we're active on on a daily basis with events and training, lots of giveaways, by the way. We love to give away transceivers and shovels and probes and gear. Uh, so that's great. And all of our platforms at Twitter, Facebook and Instagram, you can find at B-C-A-D-V Smart. So we've shortened the word adventure smart a little bit. So that again is at B C A D V smart. And, and we have uh, engagement on a daily basis. This is on all the time and I'll talk to you and, and we'll share information with you. And I encourage you to connect there. And, 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 and again, the, uh, on the app store, you can find adventure smart app there free of charge, Android or Apple. And, and all of those places we're here for you and, and happy to help you uh, learn a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Now, folks, we hope you enjoyed listening to this show. And we know that uh, several of our listeners were excited to see Sandra again. And uh, Dora Moore says, we hope she can come back in the spring and talk about boating safety. Ah, well, love to that. No like again. <laughs> All right. I'll work with you to schedule that in, Sandra. Thank you. Fantastic. Well, folks, as we wrap up, we want to take a moment to thank Land Sharks, our corporate Denali level sponsor. Landsharks.ca is the outdoor adventure and geocaching store. Check them out online or go in person and visit their store in Victoria, British Columbia. Open six days a week except holidays, and they ship online orders daily. Remember that new promotion, orders over $25. Just say maintain me when you're placing your order and you'll get a free cash maintenance kit. We also want to thank our faithful Denali level supporters. That's Land Sharks, JP's Geo Designs, Limax, Team Squirrel, and WorldCaching.com. And if you'd like to know more about supporting this podcast, please click that Patreon link on the CachingNW.com website for the absolute displeasure of having your name read right now. Yes, and we'd like to thank <clears throat> Broncos Fan for Life and Sprouter and the Camp Clan, Tick Magnet, Kev McDee. Subway Mark, Dora Moore, Dune Buddy, Kid Vegas 19, Geo Nav Pros, Wino Seattle, Hacker Doc, Billy Robson, Genies, Unteus, Keats 94, Trexer Zero, MC3 Cats, Kennel Barb, and M Nerve, both Wet Coaster and Green Words, Segehove, Alla Robrick. Oh, you got it. You got the R in there that time. Nicely done. Give me a couple of months. I'll get it right. <laughs> okay. And the keepers of the cash flow. Highlands guy. The Geo Travelers. Boomer 365. GSM times two. Kitty Quest. T Sayer. Seabeck Tribe. CRS 98. And the infamous B Pendragon. He is. He is. Uh, he is yeah. Because he's last, he always gets something. So, yeah. We should throw these all into a big randomizer and Ooh, switch up. That would really mess us up. Yeah. Well, that's funny. That's what Bryling said. Uh, is, uh, you, you should switch up who reads Oops. Ah. games each night. And I thought about it tonight and I was like, I don't know if I have time to. Too do. late. Yeah. But, yeah, we can randomize those. Stay tuned. You never know what's going to happen. All right. Well, Sandra's BC ADV Smart Land Monkey. Where are you on the Twitter webs? Well, that's uh, at Land Monkey GC on the Twitters and the Instagrams, and on Facebook we're Team Land Monkey. On YouTube, it's just Land Monkey L A N M O N K E Y. Um, and uh, you know, if you want to check out LandMonkey.ca, you can find out all about uh, 
the whole deal on where is it i've got i've got one here somewhere oh no i can't find it but the whole deal on ordering a new oh there it is land monkey geo coin so the land monkey geo coins are out and about and mm. get your hands on one if you're curious about that just go to landmonkey.co oh there we go i'm, I'm full screen so uh, just go to landmonkey.ca and you can find out all about how you can get your hands on one of those coins. You've got your hands on one of those coins. That's right. right. Eventually I did. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Wits end, my friend. How about you? Wits end. Uh, W-I-T-Z. You're right in the middle there. E-N-D. No geo coins. Not even a lot of content, but I'm there. Chris of the Northwest. I have no Z in my name. Okay. You can find me on Twitter or Facebook at Cashing in W. Instagram, I'm Cashing in the Northwest. But you know what? That's a lot to remember. Why don't you head on over to CashingNW.com slash hosts, read our bios, and find all those links that we just mentioned and a few secret ones we don't tell anyone about. But most of all, we want to thank you for taking the time to listen to this episode of Cashing in the Northwest. Don't forget that you can be part of the show. All you have to do, it's simple. Call 253-693-TFTC and leave us a comment, ask us a question, or loan us your parka any time of the day or night. Of course, you can email us at feedback at cashingnw.com. Your support helps keep quality shows coming. If you like the show, click the Patreon link on the cashingnw.com website and subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and more. Give a thumbs up or a review. The show's produced by Chris Umfenauer, Jim Paulwitz, and Jay Kennedy. The show's licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license, copyright 2019 by Chris Umfenauer. And folks, now it's time for the after show. Oh, the after show. The after show. Hey, it's um, midway through November. So this is your early reminder to change the copyright in January. Oh, I was going to say it's correct now. <laughs> it is for now. <laughs> and just tell you, put, put a reminder in your calendar. Hey, Google, remind me on January 1st. <laughs> oh, let's see. The first fatas comes from B Pendragon. Let's see if I can find it here in the scroll. We've had so much chat tonight. Mm -hmm. it's hard to find what i'm looking for you know i still haven't found what i'm looking for but he says 168 years ago yesterday the denny party landed at alki which of which ultimately led to the founding of seattle there's a 200 and or 2017 vintage virtual at location what is that gc7 beta 6 victor 4 Cool. So there's a virtual cache there, and it's uh, it celebrates 168 years of yeah. history at Alki. Yeah. Very cool. I've never heard of the Denny party. I'm gonna have to read up on that. Yeah, Denny was a was a important name in the founding of Seattle, yeah. and I believe they named Alki Beach, and I've forgotten why they named it that. Hmm. So did they also form a chain of restaurants after uh, founding Seattle? No, no. That was multiple Denny's families. That, that's, that's why it's plural. This is just a singular Denny. Got it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> it just gets worse and worse as the night goes on. No, so it doesn't get any better. <laughs> Say, is this when I should go? <laughs> Depends how strong you are. <laughs> well, exactly. why don't we jump down? Well, Thursday night at 10 to 5. I, I think maybe we'll see. <laughs> Before Sandra bails on us, why don't we jump down to number three here from Brylang? Um, hashtag Fatas. Um, Ors Peast, I think is how that's pronounced. He says, You don't want these guys to be your SAR team and put in a Vimeo link. And Sandra, I think you were talking about that earlier tonight. Oh my goodness. If it's that animation that just went around today of the, Oh, it's so worth a watch. It's really funny. It, <laughs> it's just, it's just a visual and it, but it's so well done. It's really, really I was just more laughing in tears. It's great. And, and my point was that our BC search and rescue volunteers are just a little bit more trained than those two. And those two need some help. I feel so sorry for that subject, the person that they try to rescue because he takes a beating. It's, it's, it's worth the six minutes and change to watch it. It's, it's, it's great. I know no matter if you're in the star world or not, it's funny. 
Excellent. We just posted the the link in the uh, the chat there in the, in the notes. So if anybody is watching live, they'll see that pop up and uh, pause this and go watch that. Perfect. <laughs> there you go. Let's see. I am said, and again, I'm trying to find it here. Yes. Don't release your goldfish in the backcountry ponds. And this is in... Uh, uh, was it a um, global news.ca says uh, goldfish goldfish infestations threatening native species in BC lakes. Going to have to go read up on I that. It would just be food. That's uh, right in the area where you're currently at Sandra. Exactly. And, and you know, for lack of me knowing anything about that story, what rings to my brain right away is, is in, in a lot of our programs where well, we talk about the three T's, but we also talk about respect and we talk about uh, the three R's, if we can call it that, respecting yourself, respecting others, and respecting the mountain, or that could be respecting the land. And and again, I don't know anything about that story. I haven't checked it out. But, you know, uh, you know, it's important to understand where we're going and what season we're traveling in. And, and that can be basic signage. I'm going to respect that sign because it says closed. Or, or a sensitive area, or this is an eco-friendly area, or, or an, an area that's been revegetated so there's there's simple ways to do that and taking the goldfish up there to drop them in there probably isn't the the best decision it, it, you know but there comes many forms that we can be adventure smart and respectful to the areas that we recreate in absolutely and well you're very serious and it's a very important thing i i had to pop up the comment from dora Moore. <laughs> anybody who lives in the metro <laughs> vancouver area will get the joke we just need more otters and are you team otter <laughs> and that's are you team koi or team otter? Exactly, that's a big question here on the coast. <laughs> I have to look into this. So, yeah. yeah, Sandra, do you want to give a quick backstory on that for those who might not know team koi versus team otter? Oh my goodness! Well, it had started last year, didn't it? When it did, uh, and it's and, happening again this and year. It's back, or another one is back. I'm not too sure. So I believe it's the Van Dusen Gardens. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, it's the uh, the um, Sun Yet Sen. Pardon me. Thank you. And and uh, yeah, this this wild otter came along, and decided to to have a feast many times over. Um, compliments of all the koi running or fish swimming around, and and it ended up being they couldn't catch them or her, and and uh, and so it was it got in the news over and over and over, and, <laughs> and so then the joke got out that are you are you supporting the otter? Or are you not supporting the otter? What team are you on here? Who's who's the better one in this? this fight it was a fight it, so and it's happening again which is even it was funny enough last year but then it's come back again yeah i don't think it was funny to the the people who were maintaining the garden and have been no. raising these koi for 20 years no but, i know no it was it was a battle yeah that's some serious sushi going on there that's what that <laughs> yeah. the otter came back he remembers how good it was oh yeah <laughs> he's a happy camper no mm -hmm. kidding uh, oh, Keats asked, how did everyone enjoy the Gajif events? Very much. We had a fantastic Gajif event at the Evergreen Cultural Center, thanks in huge part to Six Noisy Hikers, who were our hosts for the evening. Uh, also, as we mentioned, uh, Adventure Smart had a booth in the lobby there, and uh, we're, we're very busy talking to lots of geocachers, some who had heard of Adventure Smart and then quite a number who hadn't. So um, mission accomplished, I, I think. <laughs> nice. How about you guys? I saw you were selling popcorn. Yes. Well, no, I was giving popcorn away. Oh, right. look. There we Whoa, go. Oh, that looks good. Yeah. Uh, thank you to MC3Cats who happened to have a red and white striped vest, as, you know, everyone should. <laughs> well, you have to if you're selling popcorn. <laughs> exactly. So uh, Wits End and I helped out at uh, the WSGA GIF event and uh, very nice, very well attended. I mean, you know, more more people than seats. It's a good problem. Mm -hmm. at Fantastic. And that was at a barn. Fun. They call it a barn. I walk in and I don't call that a barn. It's, it's too well finished to be a barn for me, but okay. it's somewhat barn shaped, so. Yeah, so, uh, the the soda jerk hat makes the outfit. There you go. I I don't know if I should be offended by that. Oh, soda! I thought you said sort of. 
The sort of jerk hat. <laughs> Oops. All right. Well, and um, uh, Dora Moore had shared that she went to uh, the Gajeff event on Vancouver Island over in Victoria. She said uh, she loved it, but there were no subtitles on a couple of the films and mm -hmm. asking if it happened in Vancouver, it also happened in Vancouver. Um, so technically speaking, I know for a fact there was a subtitle file sent with the films, but if you applied the file, it subtitled titled all of the films, including the majority of them that were in English. Yes, so, that, that's how I saw it. So a lot of people chose just not to put the subtitles on. Um, and it's possible some people didn't realize how to or that they could so mm -hmm. nonetheless there were some very good films this year there if were you haven't gone yet we won't spoil it for you <laughs> well if All you right. want to spoil, just go check social media i'm sure it's already spoiled. oh it's been spoiled <laughs> yeah yeah uh folks thank you so much for joining us this week and until next week get out and adventure smart in the northwest <laughs>